During the COP26 climate talks in Glasgow, we brought you daily updates, so it's only fitting that we summarise the key points now that the conference is over. So was the most important meeting ever held in the UK a success? Overall, I think so. Essential progress was made on global carbon trading and new national targets are now required every year, not every five. For the first time, fossil fuels were included in the agreement, although the final wording on coal was weakened from phase out to phase down. I asked David Warlow from the Royal Meteorological Society for his views. Well, before the COP, we were headed for temperatures globally far exceeding the 1.5 target that was agreed in Paris. Uh, in fact, temperatures could rise as far as 2.7 degrees. What the COP in Glasgow has done has brought that down somewhat to somewhere between 1.8 and 2.4, depending on how much we uh, accept the, the word of those who've committed to making reductions in their overall emissions and who have signed the pledges to produce methane, deforestation, phase out uh, fossil fuel subsidies and indeed phase down the use of coal. I think the COP in Glasgow showed something else. It showed that civil society is actually taking a greater interest in climate change. And I was struck by how many companies and public bodies were coming forward with their own plans and ideas to reduce emissions. And not just by small amounts, by you know significant amounts. So what happens now? Well, this decade is going to be the big challenge. We have a big reduction in emissions to make, something of the order of 50% by 2030. Can it be done? In theory it can. Is it a political will? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But future COPs will undoubtedly put more pressure on countries to deliver greater and greater ambition to put us on track to 1.5. Back in 2015, during COP21 in Paris, plans were made to limit greenhouse gas emissions and keep world temperature rises below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Any higher risks climate catastrophe. Liz Bentley, Chief Executive of the Royal Meteorological Society, discusses how emissions targets and climate finance have changed following COP26. In the run-up to COP, there were a number of nations making pledges uh, in reducing emissions either by 2030 in order to become net zero by the middle of this century. And even during COP, some of the nations were making pledges. If you look at the, the various optimistic um, evaluations that have been done on those pledges, then in theory, we could limit uh, global warming, uh, average global warming to 1.8 degrees. So not on track for the Paris Agreement, but certainly getting closer to that. And that's the message. I think there's been a shift forward but probably not fast enough. During COP26, there's agreement now that um, developed nations will pledge $100 billion a year from 2023 in order to support developing nations. And a shift, not just for that money to go into uh, mitigation activities, so uh, transferring away from fossil fuels into renewables, for example, but also uh, around adaptation. So there's a doubling in the portion of funding going into adaptation for those developing countries that are already struggling from the impact of climate change. The final agreement reached at COP26 after two weeks of intense negotiations isn't perfect, but that's always going to be the case with 197 governments coming from a range of economic backgrounds. However, the Glasgow Climate Pact will speed up the pace of climate action over the next 10 years, keeping the dream of 1.5 alive. Thank you for joining me at COP26. I hope you've enjoyed our updates. If you're interested in keeping up to date on all things weather and climate, then do check out our Met Matters website, where you can also sign up for my monthly newsletter.